Well, welcome back everybody to episode four of Living, four? Living the Tiny Life Podcast. Episode four. <laughs> We're going to talk about minimalism today and basically how it's affected us, changed our lives, where it all kind of became a thing for us really. Because I think minimalism, although it seems to be a bit of a buzzword, was quite a um, big thing in our lives, wasn't it? Really, I think it's all what kind of like led to where we are and how we continue to to be. Okay. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. We already, we already spoke about it in the first podcast. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say before we start? No. No. <laughs> Becky made some um, roasted garlic hummus, and it was really nice. Very garlicky though. Oh, is that what you wanted me to say? Well, I'm just letting them oh, know okay. that you made some hummus. And we throw some, so yeah. that's good. Cool. Throw some in some bags, ready for another day. It was quite easy as well, wasn't it? It's just chickpeas, tahini, and a couple of ingredients, and whiz it up. Jobs are good and very nice indeed. This isn't Dave's dinners. <laughs> Dave's dinners. Oh God, don't get me started on that. Anyway, um, so minimalism. Where do, where do we start with this, Becky? I suppose you could talk about the podcast. The minimalist podcast. Yeah, I guess that's a good place to start. So, I don't think we really knew anything about minimalism or any, anything about it, really, until I started... I don't know what, like, made me want to start listening to this, but I started listening to a podcast. Did someone, did someone recommend it? or you just No, it? it might have just come up on my recommended or something. Yeah. So, I used to work at a golf club, yeah. and I used to spend, in the summer months... I used to spend pretty much all day just on my own on a mower. Yeah. Just going up and down, cutting grass. Yeah. So I used to listen to a lot of podcasts because if you're going to spend eight hours sitting on a mower driving around, you need to listen to something, otherwise you go mad. Mm -hmm. So I used to listen to a lot of podcasts doing that. You listen to a lot of podcasts anyway, and you still do. Uh, Did you back then? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know when I started listening to podcasts. Yeah. But but anyway, I do, I do listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, so I don't know how this thing came about, but there's a podcast called The Minimalists Podcast, or just The Minimalists, and it's I think it's just two American guys mm -hmm. that basically they just started it. Now it's become quite a big thing. Yeah. I think they just kind of started it. They used to work corporate jobs and then they quit and just went on like a minimalist journey. Yeah, and, I mean, you can listen to it. Yeah, and they kind of like just spread the word about minimalism and everything yeah and i think like we're in lots of like debt and stuff and like cleared their debts and changed their lives and... yeah so they were just like yeah like a lot of people just yeah. working to live yeah is that the right way around yeah they were working to live yeah than... no they were living to work no they were living to work rather than working to live they were just like working a lot living to work yeah yeah which i think a lot of people do no way, so you tend... they just made it really confusing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's I don't really want to explain too much about the podcast, because I, I just recommend that if you listen to podcasts and um, just listen to it, start from episode one. I think I watched about listen. 150 of them, and they're about an hour long each. I listened to loads, I got like so into it. And then I think after about 150, I was kind of like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, so um, he, and David was just going on about it a lot to me, and... Um, and then I started listening to them too. Yeah, and it was kind of um, a way of, I don't know, it's, it's quite hard to explain, but they're basically explaining how being minimal and having less things in your life can just improve your life really, and if you declutter your physical things, then your mental space becomes decluttered as well, which I think is... But and also you can get out of debt and like all of those other things. Like yeah. That's, that's like what a big thing that they're talking about is like financial freedom and stuff. Yeah, so most people have like too much stuff basically. Mm. Like even if you don't realise you have too many things. And if you can declutter and really kind of minimise your life, then it just has a drastic improvement on, on everything else. I guess. So, started listening to the Minimalist podcast, got really into it, and then they also do this thing, like this challenge, where it's like a 30 day challenge, so on the first day you get rid of one thing, and on the second day you get rid of two things, on the third day you get rid of three things, 
and then you go all the way to 30 days or go as far as you, you want to go but the challenge is to try and do 30 days yeah and then it, it works out to be around about 500 things by the end of it yeah and we we did that i don't know if we ever got to the end of it but we I did it so. we did it a few times didn't we yeah and there was just always things that we could find that we didn't like use or need or didn't even realize that we had mm -hmm. Um, and this was back when we were living in the house, yeah. in, in the big house. We had quite a lot of stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, like I think we were gradually just kind of decluttering and just getting rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I remember we had this box next to our bathroom, which just had loads of like aftershaves and perfumes and creams and just like all kinds of just junk in it really that we just never used, but we just kept just because we had it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember that specifically because it was a cardboard box just like full of just stuff. Mm -hmm. And we got rid of all of that and just like just loads of things, just pulling out drawers, just old pens, like phone chargers and just just loads and loads of junk. Um, and I think once we'd done that a few times, we'd cleared out so many things. Mm -hmm. I think that's when we kind of got to a point where we were like, OK, now we have less things. We have this house that we just don't need anymore because we don't need the space to put our things in because we're getting rid of our things. Mm -hmm. And that was what kind of made us think about downsizing to somewhere smaller, which I think... And the money. and Well, and the money as well, yeah. But then from that, we kind of ended up downsizing to a smaller place. Mm -hmm. And then obviously from that, we downsized again to where we are now. So Yeah, and there were a lot of things that were part of that transition. Like another thing that makes me... that that I think of is um, like pots and pans and mm. like cutlery and mugs and cups and whatever you might have in your kitchen and just thinking about like okay how many of these do we actually use what things can be versatile as well that's quite important mm. for us so like for example we have a rice cooker. I can see you looking at the rice steamer. Hey you made me jump then <laughs> Why did you just Because like, I was thinking exact same thing. I was like, like I was like, jump. I know what you're gonna say. Um, we have a rice cooker that steams the rice in the microwave, but we also use that to mix cakes, to make salads, to like I don't know, make flapjacks, like anything. Yeah. We use it as like a mixing bowl. But that's mm. just one example of like figuring out what things can be versatile. Mm. So what thing do you need? You need basically you need like a big frying pan so then that can be used for things even if you're only small frying something small um i don't know it's all sort of relative depending on what you use yeah. or whatever but like tupperware is another one that people have like like people sometimes have like cupboards full of tupperware and you're just figuring out like okay how much of this do i actually use mm. and how much do i need same with like mugs and cups like Oh, mugs. Mugs are the worst. There's three of us that live, three humans that live in the house, and so um, so I think we have, what, four mugs? I think we have four, yeah. Yes, At we've the moment, we down. only have two big plates. Yeah, because a couple of them are broken, have not a couple of them <laughs> Keep breaking broke. the plates. And then three bowls. Um, I think we've got like, yeah, like four mugs. A with... couple of smaller plates. So we've got like four knives, like four forks. I think we've got three spoons because we lost one. And then we have one really sharp, like, cutting knife. Yeah, one one cutting knife. Well, we've got two. We've got another one that that stays in the van. Yeah, I don't so. think it's helpful to talk about the things in the van. Because the things in the van are the things in the okay. van. Okay, but yeah, we've got, like, one knife, basically, yeah. for cutting. And then... Um, yeah, one saucepan. Yeah. Like, literally one. We used to have two. Um, and then, speaking of the kitchen... Food is another big element of that. We don't just have loads of food in the cupboards that we're not using. We mm. just have exactly what we need. Maybe bar like a couple of tins of soup Give or, or take, something. Yeah. Like we just have, this is what we need for each week. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so this is what we get in. We do the shopping every week, make a list. And mm. we go through the cupboards and see what we have. Mm. And make sure that we're eating the things that we have yeah. rather than just having cupboards and drawers just full of tins yeah. and and that everything. doesn't always like have like so obviously sometimes we think we don't have something buy it and then we actually do have yeah, it and then we, have we think, think yeah. we have it and we don't have it whatever like it's not like perfect but um we don't just have 
lots of food that we're not yeah. consuming. Well, we can't because we don't have the space to keep it. Yeah. So that's what one of the good things is about living in such a small space is that it really forces you to, to be this way and think a kind of like minimalist way that you don't have the space for all of these things. So yeah. you have to just stay on top of it. And if something doesn't get used for, say, I don't know, six months, yeah, then there's probably no point having it anyway. And then you can... Yeah, they about... have like a rule, don't they, the minimalists? Yeah. Like, I think have it's... you used it in the last six months? Will you use it in the next six months? Because obviously you have to think about the changing seasons. Yeah. So, um... I can't remember if it's six or three or something like that. Okay. But it's about like looking back and thinking forward. And yeah. I think a lot of times we'll tell ourselves stories of how we will use something and then we don't. Yeah. Um, like not like one. Like, yeah. So like, I think a good example of this for us is we have a food processor. We bought it about four or five years ago now. Mm. And it was one of those food processors that comes with like a million attachments. Mm. And we still have it all, but half of it's in the car. Yeah. And the rest of it's underneath our kitchen. Yeah, and... so we were talking today about, like, we've never used some of those attachments. Yeah. So shall we get rid of some of them? And, yeah, and so we use, like, the yeah. big jug for, like, soup. And we use some of the other bits for, like, hummus or whatever. Mm. But half of it we've never even used, and it's still in its original packaging. And it's taking up quite a lot of room. Mm. And we've talked about this quite a few times about getting rid of it. But it's mm. one of those things when you're like, oh, maybe we'll use it. Mm. We shouldn't get rid of it. If we want to sell it, we want to sell it all together as one. But it's... Um... Yeah, I think it's just about reflecting on... Uh, I don't know, you probably could sell the parts. I don't think Yeah, you true. might be able to. But I think it's just about reflecting on what you use and what you don't. And, and, and I'm not trying to say in this in those scenarios that we're like perfect. There are some no, things that we buy and then we go like, oh no, why did we buy yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and then... But I think it's also about not being really precious and like holding on to something just because you bought it yeah. um, and either trying to sell it or taking it to a charity shop or whatever it is, yeah. donating it. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously the other big thing about that is clothing. Yeah, clothes is a big one. Quite a few people have asked me about clothes. Mm. And um, I mean, you have more clothes than I do. Yeah, so I basically, I don't have many clothes though. No, not compared to what we used to have. We used no, to have I lot. used to have a lot of clothes. That was probably one of the big things for me of like going through clothes and gradually getting rid of more and more clothes mm. and being like, I haven't worn this, I'm not wearing this, I haven't worn that. Last summer I didn't wear that and I've still got it this summer, why have I still got it? Like, mm. So it was, it was quite a big process because obviously like, I don't know, I still had, when I was in my 20s and we were doing this, I still had the clothes from when I was like a teenager mm. and like dresses and stuff that I'd like worn out. Well yeah, you don't I'm... want to get rid of it because you paid for it. Yeah, and then so... I'm going like, oh maybe I'll wear that out again and then you're going like, actually, I'm, I'm not really going to wear that yeah. if it doesn't fit <laughs> me or like whatever it is or it doesn't suit me or it's not like what I wear anymore. Mm. So it's just sort of gradually like as you change, I suppose you're getting rid of things, but also like not buying new things, but buy and also when you do buy, buying like high quality things. So not having like 10 pairs of leggings from Primark or something, but having like um, so at the moment uh, we're wearing a lot of Lululemon um, and so we just have like a few really high quality items from Lululemon that are more expensive but last a long time and you can wear them like day in, day out, day mm. in, day out and they're really versatile pieces of clothing. Mm. Um, yeah, like multi-purpose. Yeah, multi-purpose I mean these trousers, clothing. I don't think I've worn anything else for the whole winter. <laughs> yeah, So. Um, and you just put your waterproofs over the top of them or whatever so it's mm. to protect them but... Um, it's it's just about I suppose finding those pieces that are versatile. There are lots of things that I've watched as well about like capsule wardrobes. Um, so I do sort of have um, a winter wardrobe and a summer wardrobe. My summer wardrobe is just in a suitcase that's upstairs, um, and then I just switch them out as the mm. seasons change. Because obviously you do wear like totally different things in the summer to what you wear in the winter. Yeah. Um, you don't want your big jumpers like your big knitted jump but like especially in in an english winter anyway you don't want your big like british <laughs> british jumper i was gonna say and i said british 
knitted jumper out in the summer so that helps with like storage because i'm like rotating things over mm. um and then even so though i have pieces i have items of clothing that i will wear all year round um i have like two main dresses that i wear for work for example and i'll sort of wear them in the winter with tights and i'll wear them in the summer with skin color tights or whatever i don't know like um so there are, and then i wear lululemon leggings like all year round um yeah and t-shirts and tops and all that kind of stuff will be all year round but a lot of things are rotate um and it's quite fun actually and it sounds really might sound a bit weird but it's really fun because you because you've put something away for like six months you then get it back out and you're like oh i forgot i had this like summer dress or this these pe this pair of shorts or whatever it is mm. and it's like you've just got that kind of fix of going shopping mm. but actually it's your clothes <laughs> um so i don't know other people might not feel like that but that's how i feel yeah. i get really excited to like get out my summer stuff and then and then get out my winter i think stuff. for me the difference between winter and summer is my shorts. trousers or a pair of shorts yeah my t-shirts stay the same but that's like evolved a lot for you as well oh, like you never yeah. used to just wear two t-shirts three three t-shirts yeah i know i used to have about a dozen t-shirts about five pairs of jeans yeah um, loads of jumpers, I had jackets, I had about four yeah. different coats. About oh yeah, that's another point. We, only, we just have like uh, all weather coats and then waterproofs. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. We don't have like, well I suppose I have a work, I have like a work jacket. Mm. But um, we don't have like loads of coats, loads of jackets, we don't have loads of shoes. Yeah, yeah, shoes is a big one because they're a real pain. Yeah, so we um, just have... I don't know what what I have anyway. Mm. I have walking boots. What am I thinking about? Walk, walking boots, flip flops, trainers. Yeah, and then your vans. Oh, and then my work shoes. Yeah. So I have four, just four pairs of shoes. Yeah, yeah, and I think I'm the same. Just boots. Well, I've got kind of like you've got boots, trainers, trainers, like gym shoes, like flip flops, slip ons. But you've got your Crocs. You've got your trainer walking boots. I think you've got more pairs of shoes than me. Yeah, I might do. You've got Crocs. Flip flops. What golf shoes? In golf, the golf shoes. Golf shoes in the car. <laughs> Even way more shoes more than me. Pairs of shoes. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, with clothes, much fewer than we used to have. Yeah. And everything that we do have, we wear. And we buy high, high quality, quality stuff. items of clothing that are more expensive, that, that but are more them. durable. Yeah. More comfortable. And we do like also... You can wear them a lot, day in, day out. Yeah. Yeah, so cost per wear yeah. is much higher than, like, cheaper clothing. But they're cut... But what I was also saying is that they're, like, higher quality, so they're more comfortable, so you mm. can wear them regularly. Yeah, yeah, there's that as well. And they yeah. last longer and, and yeah, everything looks much better. But I do have quite a few more clothes than you. Yeah, so you've got the suitcase I upstairs. Like, I have, like, jeans, obviously, and, and I have work clothes. Yeah. I have lots of different... I do have different. I think work makes it difficult. Mm. Yeah, so I don't have I don't have work clothes anymore. So I used to have loads of polos and, yeah. and everything. Um, but you've got your suitcase upstairs, which yeah, you have do. seasonal clothes in. Yeah. So at the moment your summer stuff's in there, and then we've got a footstool, which yeah. Digby's laying on at the moment right yeah. in front of us. But Becky keeps all of her just general everyday clothes in there. So I suppose you have your off-season clothes in a suitcase mm -hmm. and your in-season clothes in the, footstool. in the footstool and then i have a few clothes in the van that just live in the van, the van that are work clothes work related stuff because yeah. i go to work in the van yeah. yeah and then we've got a shelf upstairs and i think i've got a couple of pairs of shorts in there yeah. um swim shorts mm -hmm. i've got a pair of shoes up there um another pair of trousers and yeah just just a couple of bits and bobs really yeah um but that's pretty much it so for clothes wise yeah, it's it's much less than what we used to have. I used to have a well, we both used to have like a dressing rail, didn't we? Mm. With all of our clothes on it. And drawers. And drawers, chest of drawers, dressing rail. Side side table drawers. Mm. I had stuff on the floor. Yeah. I remember just, you know, I had a lot of stuff, a lot of clothes. Yeah, so even with like underwear and socks, um, I've just got six pairs of each, and that's it. Mm. And then I, I don't know what you've got, probably similar, I think. Yeah, um, got a few but yeah, instead of having like twenty pairs of socks, I literally have 
six pairs and that's it just like rotate them the other thing i want to say as well about clothes is i think that generally you want to have clothes that dry quite quickly if you live in a small space like this because if you've got materials such as cotton which dry really slowly it can be quite difficult in the winter particularly to dry your clothes whereas if you have quick drying fabric then <laughs> I'm a bit of a stickler for like so laundry and everything. So obsessed uh, with even our, the material of clothes. Even our bathroom towels are microfiber towels. We don't have the big fluffy ones because no. they dry faster. Yeah. If we had the big fluffy towels, they would just never dry. Mm -hmm. um, in the summer's better because we can hang washing up outside and it dries. Yeah. But yeah, if you've got quick drying materials, then it just makes life so much easier. Yeah. What else do we have? Oh, we just have, so this sofa that we're sitting on, the footstool opens up, but the sofa also opens up. So we have like very important, that was the other thing. We had to get rid of a lot of paperwork. Mm. Um, we got rid of a lot of paperwork, a lot of, just a lot of documents that we didn't need oh, anymore. Yeah, I remember doing that. Like old. We, I remember getting like old big like or... wadges of like old paperwork. And we were like, how many does this count for? When we were doing the minimalist challenge, oh, yeah. we were like, oh, that's 20 pieces. <laughs> Just chuck a whole handful of paperwork in the bin or whatever. Are you so excited about that? I just, I just remember <laughs> doing that. Just like going through stuff like, oh, I've got like 20 bits there. Boom. Wait, can't you? I'd be like, oh, that's day 20 done. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Um, but the point was, was what I was trying to make was that we only kept like essential items of paperwork. Mm. Um, Still do. And things like that. I meant we threw away everything else, and so in here we keep essential items. Okay, yeah. Um, and I don't think there's much else in here. I don't know. Bin bags. No, there's not really. Yeah, there's some bin bags. Um, and, and then we have a bit of exercise equipment, a yoga mat, a workout mat, some yeah. dog toys. Yeah, so just I think generally we really don't have much. No. Compared to what we used to have. I mean, we still have things. We're not um, just living here with nothing. Mm. Uh, we do have things. But I think the point is, is everything we have, we use. Yeah. There isn't really anything that I can think of. off the top, I'm sure there is. Off the top of my head. That we have and we just don't use or we don't realise that we have it. So I think one of the big things yeah. is when you do a clear out in your house. All of a sudden you just unearth things that you didn't even realise that you had. And you're just like, well, if I didn't even realise I had it, then... I might as well get rid of it because it's just taking up room. Yeah. Um, we don't really have any like um, books. So some people have a lot of books and just have a Kindle. Mm. Uh, we don't have any like CDs or anything. So I'm trying to think about what, something that people like collect quite a lot. Yeah. Of. I guess it's much easier now. It's all digital, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But we used so. to. We used to have. I used to have books and things. Mm. Um, I do have books and paperwork and things like that in my office that are related to yeah. work yes yeah, so well. we have a plastic box upstairs as well which has like board games in it yeah which we probably don't need yeah we could probably we could probably do the minimalist challenge again yeah we could probably donate <laughs> just fine i don't think we get to the end of it games but yeah i reckon we could definitely make some yeah maybe some we should maybe we should do it and then we can talk mm. about what we've found that we've been able to donate mm. yeah i think the impact of doing it though I personally feel like it's had a huge impact on my life in a positive way just having yeah I didn't think you were going to say it was negative yeah okay <laughs> but I really like knowing that everything I have gets used and I like to know everything that I have as well so there's not anything that I I don't think there's anything well, that it reduces really like it reduces a lot especially for you it reduces a lot your decision factors like so i think they say to to do that like if you're anxious struggling with stress or anything like that reduce the number of decisions that you make mm. in a day um so that you're kind of saving your decision making power or ability for important decisions that if there's something stressful going on in your life you're able to kind of save your mental capacity yeah lots of like micro decisions that you don't yeah. realize you're making and you're not we are not really like making those micro decisions so just getting dressed in the same clothes every day 
um well not the same but you know what i mean and um mm. in on rotation or whatever we're wearing the same things we have we just have a coat like but you also you're not you're not like cluttered by lots of different things mm. um even with having that reduced amount of stuff a tiny house can become very cluttered very quickly especially mm. when there's three people in that house yeah it's very easy. when there's just one of us here so when you go away or when i go away i find it so easy mm. to live in here and not it doesn't get cluttered no, it's just, exactly just me same. so if you were going to live in a tiny <clears> house by yourself obviously you still need to keep on top of it but uh it's much less hard like hard hard it's much less it's much less hard to keep on top of it but when there's three of us here and then you've got like joss's stuff and joss's school bag and things like that it can quite quickly the downstairs area can quite quickly feel quite full and cluttered yeah because you can it's not a big space. It, it like gets stressful doesn't it yeah like when there's just stuff like right now it's annoying me that that washing up is sitting there yeah, no, yeah. because you are in that small space and you have to just be aware of that and mm. like keep your space tidy and keep your space clean and i think that's good for you but if you know that you're the type of person that that yeah that likes to just sort of leave the washing up or something like that then it, it might not work so well but it's mm. um i think it's really good because you're staying on top of things yeah and there's nothing better than coming into the house and everything's clean and tidy and put away yeah. and it just feels it just feels good like mentally it feels good and if you just have things like piled up Hmm. You just get like a bit stressed out, don't you? I think you just can't. I think you just can't ha do that in this house. Well, you can't do it in this house, but I think extending, oh, I mean, generally. extending that to just like if you're in like a normal house. No, yeah, I think it's really good for you. Tidy, yeah. tidy house. So I'd much mind. rather have like an empty cupboard than just have like piles of stuff in there. Yeah. Because then I know that it's empty and it's tidy and. I don't know, it's just like less mental clutter. Yeah. And it's interesting the relationship between the two. Because I think it's easy for someone to say, oh, like physical clutter is mental clutter, mm. but it really is. Yeah. Like if you can clear that physical clutter, mm. then it, it really feels like you're kind of decluttering your head as well. Mm. Like it's quite interesting how that works. We also had a, we have a garden box. Oh yeah, we do have a garden box. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we've got jet washer in the garden box. Uh, we've got some tools in there. Just some bits and bits and bobs. Yeah. But again, all of that gets used. There's nothing in there I don't think that doesn't get used. And I have sort of... Sorry, there might be. We should have a look. I have cleared it out a couple of times in there. Um, <sighs> Dave's obsessed with clearing stuff out. Yeah. So, I'm a bit... sometimes he can throw things away and that is really annoying. So, um, do make sure that if you're thinking about doing this that you do check with your partner or whoever you live with um, before you throw something away because of it, you might be like, I'm going to do this. I want to... I've been listening to this podcast and I want to throw stuff away, but it's all like obviously. Yeah, don't throw my stuff away. Don't throw other people's <laughs> stuff away because it is. It, you don't know what is important to someone, and I think that that's really important. I do think that everyone needs to be respectful of what is important to other people. Yeah. And like obviously, for some people, this might sound quite difficult in terms of the clothes, for example. Like a lot of people have. Uh, a lot of their identity is like demonstrated in their clothes and i don't think that if that is you that this life becomes totally impossible you just need to make adjustments but so you'd you'd maybe have um the upstairs bedroom that's the upstairs part of the room that's joss's room that could be where you kind of hang up clothes or something like mm. that i think there are ways to do it but you have to compromise mm. so you couldn't be like uh, really into fashion and also really into having loads of stuff in the kitchen and also really into um, having loads of different types of bedding or like I don't know yeah I'll play and play on the piano and like you'd you'd have to figure out kind of what is re is is important to you and then sort of make compromises around that yeah. it, it, it doesn't mean that you have to get rid of absolutely everything no. in the way in the way that we have um, I think we're just more referring to just like general clutter though, like having about 50 mugs. Yes. When there's like yeah. two of you living in a house. Yeah. And just I just like don't want to make it like seem like it's impossible to no. someone who. Yeah, that is quite important. Like, has a particular passion for something. Like, if you have a passion for like 
painting or something, it doesn't mean that this will be totally impossible. Yeah, because there's nowhere to put you your might paint just around. like adjust stuff. Mm. So you might not have the table that we have. You might kind of adjust the living space. Yeah. And if you were going to buy one of the tiny houses from the place that we bought it, then you could like speak to him about how you could make those adjustments. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was sort of a random aside, but I just didn't, I just didn't want people to feel like totally put off. No, it's it's definitely important to mention because, like you said, people have different hobbies yeah. to us. Like yeah. someone might be a pianist or yeah. like playing the piano. Well, yeah. So for it's... example, we bought the shed and put uh, a spin bike yeah, in it because we example. are really kind of. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say like interfit, but we we like to exercise, yeah. and so um, and we don't because we live in a really rural area. We don't have a gym close by, um, and we looked at quite a few gyms, and none of them would really work because of parking and driving and all of that kind of yeah. stuff, and just using fuel well. and the cost. And so we decided to buy something that we would have at home because we that we both want to use a lot. Mm. Um, but obviously, sometimes you buy something like that thinking you're going to use it, and then you don't. Mm. And I think it's important not to just go, "Oh, okay, well, I just have to keep it anyway." Um, I think that's it's fine, like to just sell it, and yeah. you so might make a bit of a loss, yeah. but it doesn't. We didn't have. It's not bike. making any money if it's just sitting in the shed. Is yeah, it? we didn't have the bike until we moved here, though. Like before that, you were just working out in the house. Yeah. I bought a skipping rope last summer. Yeah. Because um, that takes up no room. But I used to also. Um, oh no, I suppose I didn't. Before the pandemic, I used to go to the. Yeah. Uh, to the gym, so that hasn't happened since we've lived in this house. Yeah. I used yeah, to just so work out from home. Um, which used to make the house shake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Becky used to um, do like burpees and. <laughs> jumping jacks and whatever else we used to do in the house and because the house is on wheels yeah. it like shakes around so I'm laying in bed in the morning the house is shaking and it's like <laughs> going on but now we've got the bike yeah luckily we've got the room to have the shed and the bike just go out there yeah so you, I suppose you also like yeah I don't know there are lots of different adjustments that you could make I was just thinking if you had if you were particularly into um makeup and shower gel and Shower, I don't know why I said shower gel. <laughs> I'm well into shower gel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some people really love like different smells and things like that. Yeah. You could have Candles maybe, maybe and, you, you know. could have maybe like an extra cupboard in the bathroom or something. Mm. I think there are lots there are adjustments that could be made. Yeah, definitely. Um But I think the point is is that if you can like discard everything that isn't important to you. Don't that eat. It doesn't have to be discarded. Yeah. Okay, well, by discard I meant Okay. Like remove, yeah, donate, sell, um, or whatever you want to do with it. And selling can be really important as well because if you are struggling with debt or anything like that, sometimes there can be lots of things that you could not realise that you could sell for for money. Mm. Um, yeah. So just like taking more of a paying more attention to what you have. Yeah. I think we tend to donate things rather than sell them, don't we? Because we don't really have anything that's much value. Uh, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to selling as well. I'd rather just like give something away. Yeah, you just get annoyed. Not bothered to sell it. Just give it away. It also becomes much harder when you have two dogs as well in a small space because they've got their stuff as well. So I have to put cereal up on the ladder because otherwise Luna gets into it and tries to eat the cereal. But they don't. They, we're not talking. That's not minimalism. No, I suppose not. They don't have much stuff, is what I was going to say. Like, they don't... They... We don't buy them loads of toys, I suppose. Mm. We just have things that they, we know that they'll play with. Mm. And that's about it, really. Yeah, I don't, hey. know, I don't really know what else to say about it, really, to be honest with you. Um, hey. It all started off with a podcast. And then I think that really kind of ingrained itself into my head anyway and I think I pass that on to you and I think after seeing the positive effects of decluttering and minimising mm -hmm. we just kind of just took it to the next level the next level the next level mm -hmm. and I think if you look at our lives now compared to what they were five years ago mm -hmm. I think that without question we're in a much better space now like I, it's hard to remember what it was like because it was so long ago well, no, we weren't like unhappy. No, we were, no, we were never unhappy. But I don't know. I feel like we have much more like freedom with everything now, mm -hmm. which is good. Obviously, the financial freedom as well. 
that comes with doing this because I I suppose you wouldn't really be able to live this lifestyle mm. if you didn't embrace minimalism because it just wouldn't work. No, yeah. You have to be mentally conscious yeah. all the time of all the time, but well, like when you're buying something or subconsciously when you're buying something. Yeah. You have to kind of reflect on like do I actually need this? Mm. Um will I actually use this? Uh before buying anything that you buy really yeah. i think sometimes it's good to wait rather than just buying something mm. on impulse it's good to like wait a bit and see if you still want it like towards the end of the month or yeah. whatever um but i think the average person there's some other rule that the minimalists have about that i think they say like if there's something that you want wait 30 days or something 30 days or something and then only buy it if you still if you still want it need it or need it yes they also categorize things into wants needs and something else i don't know just yeah, just go and listen to it it's quite good maybe it's just wants and needs yeah i can't remember good though okay yeah well i think that's that then um yeah as always any more questions hit us up and we will address everything yeah i hope that was interesting and we weren't just rambling on yeah i feel like we kind of like do ramble a bit but that's okay yeah i think that's fine as long as everything makes sense and you kind of just tell us if it doesn't yeah but generally speaking you, you've got to be quite minimalist mm -hmm. to live this kind of lifestyle and i think that's a good thing and i like the fact that this now um just kind of forces you to retain that yep and you, okay. you can't like slip off the the track and go on an Amazon spree because you've literally got nowhere to put anything. So, yeah, it's kind of a win win. Okay. All right. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one, which I think we might do about the van in the van because we're going away in the van. So, if we have time to do that, then we'll record that one and talk about our experience with the van, the new one, the old one, and, and everything that came with it. Bye. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, Diggy didn't like that. Oh. Diggy doesn't like it when we say bye.